Welcome back to another video here on the channel. We've got the wife's truck. We've got an Arizona tea can with some testing on it for paint color, which is actually pretty freaking spot on compared to the first test we did on the truck, as you can see, which was not so. Not so spot on. That color is actually dang near a perfect, dang near perfect match. What we're actually gonna try to do is pull the plastic off of her bumper and we're gonna try to fix this bumper plastic here. So as you guys can see, somebody else already tried to do a little bit of paint work on this at some point, probably the same thing that I'm about to do. And it's just completely chipped off and scratched up all along here. Just doesn't look the best. And then her grill is also black. And so what I thought about doing was simply pulling the bumper plastic off the top, maybe even the lower valance and the grill. And with just one piece for starts, let's say the bumper plastic, because it's already all scarred up and it's already got paint chipped and everything else. Test on that, you know, working with sandpaper, a little bit of the bumper plastic there, any around any of those spots that are kind of you know, flaked off already, repainting it, letting it dry and sticking it back on the truck and seeing how that turns out. Is it a professional paint match? Of course not. However, in the meantime, I thought, hey, make a cool video. And maybe there's some of you out there that might go, hey, if I can paint match my truck temporarily for the summer, let's say, to see if I really want to fork up the money to get it done or just something short term, or maybe it's a farm truck and you would like to paint match some stuff, but you don't want to go spending hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars in paint matching work to have it done professionally when you really don't care that much, whether it's done professionally or not, or let's say it's just a personal vehicle, you're not really worried about it being a showstopper and you just wanna have something to do on it, maybe this will be something that works for you. But before we get to that, guys, do not forget that you can enter to win Nastro 2.0 here. I'll drop a much better picture right over here. Check this thing out, guys. It's a beautiful Delmonica Red second gen that we used to call Nasty Red, and now it's Nastro 2.0 because it's got all new paint. Brand new KG1 Forge wheels, new tires, and a whole bunch of other goodies that were swapped out on this thing and it is beautiful and ready to go. No, this oil mess is not from that truck. That's from doing a full service on this thing the other day. And unfortunately we made a little bit of an oil spill in the shop and between drilling holes in the filter to try to crank it off there and everything else, we ended up making quite the mess. And so now it just looks really bad. Let's get to pulling this bumper plastic off and seeing if we can get this thing to match up the best that we can for a total of 15 bucks. There wasn't really a whole lot to film with that, but I did take a sanding block, lightly sand around all the flaky stuff on the bumper plastic. And then I took some water, paper towel, wiped it all down. Then I took two dry paper towels, made sure there was no moisture left on there, let it sit for a little bit. And then here we are. It's not perfect, of course. It's not from a paint shop that does this specifically to perfect it because you're paying them high dollar. Um, you can still see some of the imperfections under some of the paint. But it, it turned out pretty good. Like, color-wise, the color is great. Like, the color to the truck. I mean, I'll try to get you the best I can. The color from the truck to the plastic is very, very, very close. I mean, it said that it was Chrysler, OEM match, whatever. You know, the best probably as close as I can get. I mean, it looks pretty stinking close. Um, and I just wanted to test with that because I thought about having that grill. She's wanting to get rid of the grill anyways and swap it out with a chrome one. That's her intentions. So I figure, hey, what the heck? If we've already got it, why not do a little experimenting with it? So I'm gonna pick up some more stuff tomorrow, do a light sanding on this, prep it, prime it, paint it. And I'm gonna see how that turns out too. I'm not sure. Uh, you know how it's going to turn out because this is kind of a glossy finish so i don't know if this is meant to be painted or not but i think if it's prepped right it should work at least for a little while and at least then we can see what it would look like with that paint matched on the front end of the truck as well i also thought about pulling off the lower bumper valance let me know what you guys think about that i thought about pulling off the lower bumper valance and painting that the same charcoal color as well now that i found out what color code from those dupli color cans is the closest you can get to the factory color. I thought about pulling that off as well, and then you just have like that chrome strip in between, but then all the plastic would be that charcoal color. I even thought about pulling these out and painting them, or simply just pulling these out, getting rid of them, and throwing like LED pods in there, 
and then throwing like a 30 inch curved light bar in the bumper just trying to mess with some stuff on this truck here i mean like with all the ventilation cracks around the barn i mean it just gets so dusty in here but these trucks are always totally clean when we park them but like there's trucks like with nasty red where it's like you know it's a giveaway it's going off to somebody like i'm gonna pay the premium price to make sure that the paint is done like to perfection but like for something like this that's going to be with us a while it's not like it's urgent to make sure it's done professional grade right away it's kind of like why not mess with it for a little bit and use it as an opportunity to make content for you guys that also maybe want to do some of these small things to your truck but you don't want to you know fork out thousands of dollars for some of these upgrades that really if you're not too picky and if you just want it to kind of look aesthetically good and you're not too worried about it being like top 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 notch this i mean like for example i don't think you can really tell that charcoal from that i mean yeah when you get up close you can be like oh that's not oh yeah but i mean it looks pretty stinking good and i'm i'm pretty happy with how that turned out next segment of the video here got the tractor all cleaned up I actually just use this thing to mow down and plant about an acre and a half acre and three quarters worth of corn just uh your typical field corn yellow corn nothing special not like sweet corn or anything just your typical agricultural grade and what i did was i used this tiller cultivated everything made two passes over everything with the tiller got the dirt really nicely churned up and it was super super dry so it was good and bad good in the fact that this thing didn't have to get stuck or bogged down in any kind of mud or anything it got plenty of traction no issues with traction bad in the sense that when the ground is that hard it can be hard for this thing to cut very deep into the ground because it's just like hard 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 ground and so we were able to do that though about an acre and a half acre and three quarters give or take four different locations on the property back here and it did really well got everything done uh, mowed it all off everything that need mowed off some of the spots were already mowed off and just needed tilled over a couple times put down lime fertilizer corn seed and then i set the tiller to where it was only hitting the ground about two two and a half inches down into the dirt that had already been tilled and then i went over the plots again to kind of cultivate the lime and fertilizer and corn seed into the soil just a little bit and then i actually got a sprinkler system and 850 feet of hose yes 850 feet of hose and i was actually able to move it around to each of those locations little by little and it shoots like a 90 foot circle of water and so i was able to actually water all those areas as well because we have not had any water out here in two and a half three weeks and in the forecast we have no water for the next two weeks in the forecast it's like two days that are like 20 percent chance of rain so i'm gonna hold my breath and i got too much money and seed and time invested in it for my deer hunting stuff and my plots i'm like i cannot have these things die okay we gotta get we gotta get them watered even if it's just one or two times a week and it takes a bunch of time moving the sprinkling system around I can't have my plots die because that means that my hunting is going to go way downhill if there's no nutrients, there's no plots, there's no crop of any kind around here for the deer to come through and give them a reason to stick around. At least for my location, like without that added element, the hunting quality just goes way down. And this is actually probably the cleanest this thing's ever been since it was brand new. Nasty red and its natural element. This is literally what we built this truck for. Like, legit. Like, actually, my dad had a 30 foot gooseneck at the time when we had this truck built originally on the channel. And when we were originally discussing with like Pusher and some of those other guys on how to build this truck and what we were going to use it for, we had discussed pulling a 30 foot gooseneck loaded down with round bales, square bales, hauling bulldozer, backhoe, like, you know, heavier equipment. And uh, we actually built this entire truck to do this type of work, but also just be able to have a lot of fun. So it was built for performance and also heavy towing. And I gotta tell you, it, uh, it flawlessly does those things. Other than being a little dusty, she's in her element right there.
And to those that were wondering, based on the previous video, I mentioned that this was for sale. It has already now been sold. Put a deposit down and he's supposed to pick it up tonight. So he's driving from like four hours away. Didn't last long, a couple of days and it's gone. And to those of you that are wondering why buy it and sell it so quick, I think I already kind of mentioned just the size difference, but she already found another one that she wants that is pretty much the same as the price range that this one was when she had purchased it, not what she's selling it for, but and so what she's actually gonna be trying to do is get another three horse slant that's like this one, gooseneck, still has a living quarters, but it's not a full living quarters. Like this one has shower, toilet, a table, and like a full size bed up in there with a small kitchen area. I mean, it's like literally from here over it's all just a living space which is literally like half the length of the entire trailer is just for like an on the road mini home basically you know like basically like a camper just attached to a three horse trailer which is a, the purpose of that um, and then it's got a tack room here and then it's got another tack room in the back area what she's just going to try to do is get something that does not have as much of an elaborate living area with all that extra space she just wants something that has like a bed over top with a little tiny section um for like basic stuff but she doesn't need the bathroom and shower and the table and all the all the extras that are in there and i'm pretty sure she's already found one that she's wanting to go pick up it's around the same year give or take it's pretty close to the same in terms of how old it is but it's way smaller it's a 16 footer plus the over bed space so overall total length is only about 20 feet and so it's going to be a whole lot more practical for her to be able to pull around versus this thing which is give or take 30, 32 feet. Shaving off that 10, 12 feet of trailer is gonna make a big difference for her to be able to use it as her own. And the fact that it's still a gooseneck will be nice. And the front end will not be as square. It's gonna be a little bit more of a round front end, which will help alleviate sharp turns and sharp backing up points with the cab being an issue, um, especially with that bed extender that um, we put in there, the ball extender. That alone is gonna help, plus having a little bit different nose front end on the trailer. Plus shaving 10, 12 feet off of it, it's just gonna be a better fit for her. She's gonna be able to get more use out of it. When she bought this, she was anticipating that it would be like this really cool, big elaborate thing. And then she quickly realized that it was just a lot bigger than she was anticipating after having hooked up to the truck just a couple times and she wants to downsize a little bit. Do not forget, you can enter to win Nasty Red 2.0 right now at lnpgear.com or on our app. Links are in the description below to download. Right now, our highest app bonus we have ever ran is live. It is 12,000 bonus entries for any orders placed on our app. No code required. Just simply place an order on the app and any order placed between now and Wednesday, June 7th is going to get those 12,000 bonus entries applied under their order name and order confirmation number. But that is only until this Wednesday. As a huge thank you for downloading our app and giving it a try. It's our highest bonus we've ran for the app. So hit that link. Check it out. Any order place also is going to get you 20 entries for every $1 you spend. So every $1 is going to get you 20 entries plus the bonus that we're running right now until Wednesday. Take advantage of it while you can. Links are in the description. And good luck. This giveaway is ending on June 25th. To everybody asking about the white dually, we should have a winner hopefully within the next day or two. I do know that the entries have been gone through and they should have a winner for us. Every time this happens, I have to go through and kind of explain like the seven to 14 days is a generalization of when you should always have a winner. However, sometimes there are exceptions to that rule and it does go over a couple of days, but it's nothing to be concerned about. It just happens sometimes, whether it be on their end or the software end or just waiting for mail-ins and stuff like that to all get done. Um, sometimes that's just kind of how it goes and it can go over a little bit. But rest assured, yes, there's still going to be a winner drawn. And yes, the truck's still getting given away and the cash. So stay tuned for that, guys. Follow us on social media. All those links are in the description as well. Make sure you don't miss anything. And I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.